Welcome back to Plot Points. I'm the host, DM Legend and Son, DM Sean, and I just wanted to go over real quick what happened last week in case you weren't able to tune in with us. Last week we started off um, in our usual setting up there in Eberron off the Eldine Bay in the area right bordering or bordering the Demon Waste and the Eldine Reaches. There our party of misfits had gathered and joined a circus and as our show began we talked about how lucky they were and possibly how unlucky Mike's character is because he reminded me that he has three unlucky rolls per long rest. We found out that during the show that Griffin who had started the show had been shot by a shadowy figure that he was checking on. This immediately led to a complete kerfuffle of everything that was going on where they were in the middle of rescuing this metal automaton they took down, rescuing Griffin, dragging him off, and this other individual, Verdict, a paladin, shows up, and it turns out that he knows Anna. Den of Wolves, in the meantime, is admittedly that he trusts the circuit master a little more, so he's all about getting them all to the tent where they can meet up. Blaze defends them while they all gather inside until Arimathea shows up and ushers the mob that has gathered from the roundabouts away. Then they begin on negotiations, and we see some new ones and some old ones, some aggressive ones as Blaze puts his foot to the uh, throat of this automaton as he comes around and tells him, you know, I can easily remove your head. But they do decide they're all going to still end up going to heaven. While there, they um, realize that this individual that Blaze is interrogating is quite a bit haughty and he claims to be a victim that even though they accuse him of trying to stop the circus getting to heaven, he says he has nothing to do with any of that. But during which Griffin admits that, oh, hey guys, by the way, I forgot, we actually have a mission. So they put their stones together and learn that their mission the entire time was to infiltrate the circus so that they could get to heaven and find out what the emperor has planned. They learn that the emperor already has a flying ship, but it's not one of House Caneth design. They're supposed to find out that this emperor who ha is renowned for having troops that fought at the end of the war, these samurai, might have something new and their individual who has trained them, wants them to find out what this new thing is. Again, infiltrate the circus. Um, Griffin, we learn, tends to think out loud. He doesn't have separate quiet thoughts. He just tends to speak what he's thinking. And we also learn that Verdict skills as a healer will be welcome in the circus. That's actually what they do is they negotiate for him to come up above. All this happens before the morning circus. The final show where our PCs and players once again put on this amazing time. In fact, it goes so well that even though Blaze, who's been slapping this poor little gnome with a candle on his head with his whip, pays the gnome, makes sure there's no hard feelings. And it's all supposed to end well, except for the fact that there's once more a fire. This time, the fire starts underneath the pews, and it appears that Slappy, the imp puppet, that was brought by Verdict and the cat that Blaze has adopted called Rifle have somehow gotten into a kerfuffle and somehow they're involved with this fire. But you know, all's well that ends well and between the players and the circus hands, they get the fire under control and our PCs get paid 50 gold pieces for having put on these two shows. Seems like everything is going well and they're going to be going up to uh, Javin. Griffin decides that he wants to negotiate at Anna's suggestion for Robin, his kinku, to be trained. And Arimathea, the circus master, agrees that the flying kinku would be quite an attraction. So our PCs now all are heading off to heaven. When they get there, they want to do a little shopping with their money, but the circus is only going to be inside the Imperial Palace's courtyard. A courtyard that the PCs have examined, notice strange figures atop the walls, and an area where they feel that there might be a concealed door because it seems to be passively guarded by people who are always around it, not allowing them to investigate. They are able to convince the one individual to leave, and they're just starting their investigation when Slappy reveals his inner desire to get 
Verdict inside the bottle. Anna intervenes with magic and ends up taking his place. And there we leave Anna trying to get out. Verdict, who responds with thunderbolts and lightning, cutting this impuppet familiar in two. And it disappears. But what is appearing now are all the guards. Stay tuned as we find out how this all plays out. Hey, hey, welcome back to Plot Points, the show where we have all the very best players on the internet bringing you amazing stories. And I want to thank each of you viewers for being here with us tonight. Thanks for those who are hosting us. Thanks for those who are tuning in. Thanks for the plotters that mess with our story and keep these players on their toes. I'm DM Sean, otherwise known as Legend and Son, the story guide for Plot Points. And I want to introduce you starting off with, I don't know if we've started with... Wow, I have those screens wrong. I'm going to have to adjust that. I'm going to start with Brock, who's actually in Russ's position. I'm going to do a little um, stream magic here real quick. Don't know what happened. Um, and I'll figure this out while they introduce themselves. All right. Hello, everyone. I am Brock. Um, tonight, apparently, I'm playing Russ. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, um, I, I will be playing the uh, Dragonborn Druid uh, named Blaze. Also, a.k.a. Indiana Blaze. Um, looking forward to tonight's session and uh, see where we take it tonight. Go ahead and take it away, Russ. The actual Russ. Thank you, Brock. Uh, so I'm Russ. I'm playing the in a lot of danger paladin tonight. I hope you all have a great time watching us try to wriggle out of this one. Uh, looking forward to seeing how all this uh, pans out. Hopefully, nobody ends up. Uh, Pushing daisies or anything like that. I'm I'm trying to stay optimistic, but we'll see. This is this looks like it's going to be a big deal. So, take it away, Herc. All right. Uh, hey guys, uh, I'll be playing the wonderful warlock Aracokra, known as Griff. Um, yeah, super excited to see uh, the reactions of our wonderful characters to Russ's character because he doesn't look like he's going to be in a good spot initially, but. That's just speculation. Could go a different way. I'm excited either way. So uh, hope uh, hope you guys are strapped in for this one. And I guess that brings it back to me. Woo! Yes, sir. Hey, um, let's see. We you just heard my voice. If you were watching, go over last week at the end of this show. We're gonna have the uh, players take over for that and do that. But let's not waste any time. We're already two minutes in, and time is precious, especially. When you decide to, like, right in the middle of the Emperor's Palace, just unleash thunder, lightning, magic, and you're coming in with an already strange circus. So, you know what? That's where we left this off with our new paladin friend, Verdic, unleashing magic right in the middle of the Emperor's Courtyard. And now we're going to see exactly what happens with all of that. Verdic, take it away. All right, so the attack was complete. Thundering boom. Saw the puppet go into particles. So I guess my immediate reaction would be I'm going to look around quickly and I'm going to attempt to use a bonus action to put the pole arm back into the pen. Quickly, you, you say the word, use your bonus action. The pole arm disappears into a quill in your hand once more as you put the silver cap on it as a bonus action. When you do this, you turn around and you can already see figures rushing down the steps. You see the person that was returning with the tray of food get it knocked out of his hand as guards, large guards, come rushing at you. Inside the circus area, Griffin and Blaze were working about their things. Uh, Griffin, what were you doing last when we left you last week? Well, Griffin was just staying a little disgruntled because he wanted to fly, uh, but they told him no. So he's kind of like in a, a already pissy mood, uh, staying on the ground and just hanging out with Blaze right now, uh, just waiting for the next uh, action-packed moment to happen because he needs something. And so when this thunder crashes, rocking the place, what what's your response? Hmm... Well, 
he's kind of surprised because he, knowing that like he is bred in the sky, he kind of gets to know the weather a little bit better. So seeing all of a sudden that there's this thunder is kind of peculiar to him and he's curious. So he wants to check it out for a second and, and see why all of a sudden there's a thunderstorm. Cool. So should I assume you go rushing out? Yes, sir. Indiana Blaze, what were you doing when the thunder struck? <sighs> Trying to uh, keep Griff a little calm, settled, since he was uh, kind of uh, flustered and upset. So I was just trying to kind of talk him down off a little bit of a ledge there. And uh, <laughs> then I heard this loud boom and it caught both our attentions. And we immediately, you know, snapped our heads and was like, mm, probably better go check that out. As you two come out of the tent, you see this the, from another angle, the same thing that Verdict is seeing elsewhere. You can see off to the right near the one wall where... Anna had left a little bit ago. You can see Verdict turning around, looking, um, has, seems to have a large feather in his hand and whatnot. But most importantly, what you gather is directly towards what you are told is the Emperor's Temple and the Emperor's private suites and whatnot. These steps are rushing down guards, but not just any guards. Brock, you realize... These are some of those same large misshapen guards that were up on the wall. Griffin, you recognize them too as one of the ones that shot towards you, not the individual, but the same shape, the same size. What stands out most to you is that they look like the big guy standing next to you somewhat. They look like Blaze's character, Draconic. Blaze, you don't even have to make a perception roll for this. You realize something immediately about them. Not a one of them has a tail out the back. They're running like two-headed people, but their face and whatnot is scaly and elongated like yours. There's something radically different. They are armed, That most of them have swords, and they are rushing straight towards Verdict. You have an opportunity to get there first if you want. Uh, yeah, we're going to head over and find out what's going on with him and uh, Anna. <clears throat> well, the first thing you realize is the pair of you, oh, Griffin, you're not going to be able to make it there. Your run speed isn't quite as fast, so you'll probably be arriving with the guards if you want. Yeah, sure, why not? Okay, so you do your little, <laughs> you know, kind of waddle waddle as a bird running along as fast as you can, you know, your little legs just not quite the same. Blaze boosts ahead of you, comes skidding in, but Anna's nowhere in sight right now. Um, should I assume, Verdict, that you put away the bottle? Or do you have a bottle in one hand and the quill in the other? The bottle is collapsed in my hand, okay. and then I just have a quill, and I'm kind of like this as I'm seeing all these soldiers coming at me. So I'm just kind of not looking... Like I'm up to too much trouble. Um, we'll, we'll see how I play that out once it gets to my turn. I like that. I'm not looking. I'm not trouble at all, officer. You can you can <laughs> fully trust me. Nothing to see here. I don't whatsoever. know what you're talking about. <laughs> this is not the paladin you're looking for. <laughs> there you go. That's what divine emissaries for. <laughs> oh my. There you go. <clears throat> uh, also, Sean, yes. somebody, uh, Shade and Shadow redeemed minor wild magic surge. Oh, by the way. no, already? Shade, already. you're up to your shenanigans <laughs> so quickly. Let me turn that off. I don't know who's trying to call me from where, but I can't take it right now at the moment. Um, Wow, Shade, let me add that on there. Oh, my. Don't they know that when you're in plot points time, you're not going to answer the phone? Silly people. <laughs> Silly rabbit. Plot points are for viewers. <laughs> And wild magic's for everybody. Oh, oh, the shenanigans mm -hmm. that are going to come from that. Oh, oh this will be good. That's only the minor one. Yeah, that's not the kerfuffle. Yeah, that's just the minor wild magic. That's the minor. When we do, we learned in the other stream because Shade or somebody else decided to unleash a major one. Thank you very much for that, Verdi. We um, put an asterisk next to it to indicate that, yeah, there's a big one coming. And then we just decided to roll the dice and see with each wild magic surge what happens um to that end you skid in 
Verdict's got bottle in one hand, feather in the other. Blaze, you come running up just as the guards are approaching, and amongst them, this waddling bird and whatnot. Now, numerous circus individuals have come out, too, because they were like, thunder, lightning, very, very frightening. What the heck's going on? But there is no clouds overhead. You know, the clouds that this city's built on are beneath you and doesn't appear thunder and lightning, which is probably why the guards are here in the first place. They come rushing up to find out what's going on, immediately surround, what the heck? Wow, people, stop calling me. I am busy at the moment. Um, Popular dude. Yeah, now I know who it is because they're going from one phone to the other phone, and I'm like, stop, a little bit busy. Um, Sorry for the distraction. The guards come up quickly surrounding you all, and, uh, of course, Griffin, you're kind of blending in with them. No idea where your tabaxi friend is at the moment, whether or not he's about or he has gone off to do some tabaxi things with the few tabaxi that were able to get up here as well as part of the roundabouts. They surround you and immediately demand verdict for you to drop weapons, but it doesn't appear you have any weapons. Um, just the bottle and the quill. Now, of course, maybe they figure you're a magician and able to summon things with these magical implements in your hands. Peace, friends. I was merely practicing a trick for the circus. As you can see, I am not armed. And I am not emanating any type of magic. So I'm going to hold the bottle, and I've just got the quill. I'm going to get down on my knees. My hands are going to be up like this. And I'd like to use a bonus action to activate Emissary of Peace and carry with that a persuasion roll. How many times a day can you do that? Just the once. You already used it once last session. Oh, did I use it last session? Ah, no. All right. Well, I'll try a normal roll. Did you use it before the long rest, though? I remember last session you used it, but I don't remember if it was before. It was at the beginning of the session, right? With the town spot? Yeah. So so you have it again. Yeah. It's after the long rest. You're good. So we'll we'll take a crack at it and see how it goes. There's that. So that's plus five. And then we'll do the roll. I would also like to step up and kind of uh, act like I'm part of the the guard coming up in here. And I'm going to like act like I'm searching him. And uh, take a look at what he's got. You and would he, automatically know that you will not fit in because you're not wearing Imperial Guard armor and stuff. These guys stand out for what they're wearing as well. I wouldn't want to have you try and do something that your character would automatically know. There's no way this is going to succeed. Okay. What are you talking about? He's an off-duty <laughs> Imperial Guard. He's off-duty, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's just strolling the streets. Yeah. I mean, you can certainly try. I have no problem with trying, but I, th- I think a lot of people would yell at the DM if the DM said, oh, yeah, this automatically fails when it would be obvious to your character that you don't look like them and stuff. Um, do you still want to try? Um, well, I mean, yeah, what the heck? Okay. All right. So <laughs> All right. You maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe maybe they'll, they'll think I'm uh, the Emperor's personal Oh, so, steward or something. Yeah. He's just one of us. He's all right. <laughs> so you go over um, right along with these other guards and start approaching, um, in, or excuse me, Russ's character, Verdict, and start checking out what he's got and everything else, right? I'm, mm-hmm. I'm understanding the scenario, right? Okay. You approach right in. You start in on this. Um, and again, you, there's a back, there's a wall very close by that they had been approaching here so there's really no out there it's a half moon circle of all these guards as blaze comes in and starts you know messing around with verdict too you said you wanted to take a careful look at what he's got as you don't need to make a perception roll to notice that there's something moving inside this long stemmed bottle that he has this cut glass bottle which you did not see previously on his character whether he had it pocketed away somewhere or what and i just want to make the comment out loud yeah no weapons here. And you say that in common? I say, I just say that out loud. In the common language? Uh, the local uh, common, yeah. Okay. Um, make a performance roll. I'm going to, should I conclude that you're trying to imitate their accent? Because yes. they speak with, all right, yeah. I just, again, I try to, whenever I think <laughs> I'm making an assumption, I always like to announce it to my players because the player might say, oh no, I'm using my own voice. I want to stand out or something. So, cool. So you imitate the accent of these individuals who are up in the cloud, you know, with your draconic, you know, oh, look, nothing here or whatnot. And they look at you like, 
strangely turning their head and then they're like, who are you? Wait, both of you. And then now Griffin, who's standing amongst them, is just kind of blending in too. But Brock's character, Blaze, trying to basically put one over on them, hoodwink them a little bit, you know. Not really, but, you know, just being there like this has gained their, <laughs> shall we say, ire a little bit as they try to put all three of you up against the wall. As this is happening, that individual who had the tray and was bringing the food comes over and he's like, oh, no, I, Please stop. And as he interjects himself, you see him trying to not look these individuals in the eye. These individuals who are dressed similarly each have long swords with them, though none of them have brandished them yet. They've come down as if their very presence would be enough to intimidate you or stop the paladin. Again, they notice very quickly that this individual, who says he was practicing for the wall, doesn't have any weapons, just as Blaze has confirmed. And as this other individual comes up, he quickly interjects that these are the emperor's guests and must be treated as such. The guards, shall we say, these other dragon individuals, snarl very menacingly, mostly towards Brock's character. They don't seem to like Blaze for some reason. Um... And they actually don't defer to this person speaking, but whether they're taking his advice, they back off. And that is probably the most noteworthy thing in itself, that they would back off upon request just because you're guests of the emperor. Um, do I perceive... Um you know, what's behind their, their snarls. Uh, do I have any, any idea on exactly what make, it is or where it's coming from the animosity or whatever? Make that? an insight roll. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Mm, looks like it. Oh, you know what? I don't have that turned on on the main screen here for everybody. So let's pop that up. Wow. Holy smokes. Wow. Um, Wow, yeah, 24, dude. Hey. <laughs> um, yeah, as a DM, I got to honor that sucker. Um, yeah, you get the perception right off the bat that they're probably sensing a difference in you, and you know that your history from where you come in the southeast with your people, in the lands of Kabara, it's very territorial, very tribal, and chances are... It's literally just the fact that you are not one of them. Although, looking at them and reading their face, you also notice there are more distinctives than just the lack of a tail. Your snout is much larger. You're very proud, your people and whatnot, of the draconic features and bears. Theirs is more subdued, almost like a human face had been elongated. So it's snout-like, but it's not out with all the fangs. Like, if you rear back your lips and snarl you're like a miniature dragon head snarling whereas these ones would be something more like different types of dinosaurs it's much smoother they might have teeth under there but they have none of the ferocity that's immediately evident in yours i would almost say that they were for lack of a better term if we use that disgusting human speech an evolution that has taken away some of the savageness that you have a more tamed, let's say that, let's, let's, let's be really, use those human terms and we'll call them a tamed version of the Dragonborn. Okay. Um, you as they s slightly step back, I just kind of reach up and slide my fingers across my hat and kind of nod. And you don't have your hat. You left it with the young man and said that you would get the hat back after you got his teddy bear and you've never gotten the teddy bear. Well, I was going to get it back in the fall morning. I said, if we found the teddy bear, we would get his teddy bear back. So you just want to go and take it from the young man? I, I will retcon this for you if you would like to do that. No, nah, that's okay. We'll go ahead and keep looking for the teddy bear. Are you sure? All right, then I don't do that. I just, just take in what I what I find out, what I, what I perceive from these guys. And As a dungeon master, I really like the idea of this big dragon going and taking the hat back from this little boy. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, no, I wouldn't do that. Oh, 
See, that's how you stop your DM from having. I'll communicate cl more clearly. <laughs> trying to sidetrack us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying to set those dominoes in motion for what happens later. You know. Oh, oh okay. look! I would have helped you, but this is the way you treated me. <laughs> Digging that hole. <laughs> <laughs> Brock, who's played at my table before, is like, yeah, I don't think I'm giving that one away. <laughs> I always check for booby traps, bud. Yeah. <laughs> that one He's was, experienced. Uh, that's definitely loaded. Um, I got so sidetracked on the little boy. I'm sorry. I forgot what you just told me. <laughs> I was like, my I just mind take, was in, I just take in, uh, you know, what I perceive, you know, with them kind of looking at me as kind of an outsider, not really liking you know, the difference between us um, and just wait to see where it goes next. Okay. As you do so, <sighs> I just hit enter before I finish typing. Oh God, help me. Oh, I'm having so much fun. Um, everybody gets plot point because I'm distracting myself. <laughs> of course, I'm going to distract myself and type those plot points in. So no, I'll wait. I'll give you two plot points here in a moment. These individuals, the guards and whatnot, who have come and surrounded you all seem most concerned with finding out whether or not an attack had started, a magical attack. Using Russ's answer, Verdict quickly ha seems to have allayed some of their suspicions. Griffin, you're over there with them, and with this other individual saying that you're part of the circus, Arimathea also enters into the scene. She keeps her distance, though, um... And you're all able to notice something very quickly. She keeps her head down. I'd like to know some of your body language as you each pick up on this. One of the local individuals kind of keeping their head down. And you notice Arimathea coming. Especially for somebody like Blaze. Um, would you pick up on these subtle hints or would you be like, oh, hell no. I would probably pick up on them, but I'm not going to defer to them. I mean, they're snarling at me, so I'm going to maintain eye contact. Um, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily, you know, curl my lip and, and show my, you know, extra teeth or anything like that. But I'm I'm definitely not going to defer to him. I like that. So not aggressive, but refusing to defer. I love that. So, right. Griffin, how would you reply? OK, so at the moment, uh, you did say that they tried to put us up against the wall, right? Yeah, it looks like they're trying to possibly you've seen yeah. arrests before and you're like, yeah, this is probably going to end badly and we're about to be arrested. Yeah. So they, they physically, like, touched Griffin, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. And now now they released us, right? So Griff isn't even going to, like, pay attention to Arimathea because he, before that, he was still flustered. So when being touched by people that he doesn't want touching him, he got a little bit even more flustered. So once they released him, he's just going to brush off, brush himself off, brush himself off, and just be like, Oi! What the fuck is going on here? What? Who are you? Oh, Jesus. I, I've seen you folk before. But I'm not even going to ask you any questions right now. So he looks at Verdict and says, I actually have a question for you. Where the fuck's our friend? You also would notice a figure moving in the bottle now, though you don't know who it is unless you try to make a perception roll. And you're muted, okay. Russ. You're still muted. Yeah, it's still muted, yeah. How's that? There you go. There, there we go. go. All right, we're alive. The button didn't work. All right, so I'm just going to look over at Griffin and be like, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to intend to answer any kind of questions to anybody until we're sure that we're not going to end up at a brig somewhere. So let's just hold that question for later. Oh, that's odd. This is our friend we're talking about. We barely know you. Let's just say we had a problem with the imp again. I... Oh, One of the challenging guards asks what magic this is about an imp. And of course, the other individual tries to say, oh, well, maybe it's part of the show. You know, the, you know again, keeping their eyes down. Blaze, very... You get the eye... No insight roll needed. It seems the one is getting closer and closer to you. Not shying down, taking your refusal to defer as a challenge. And 
the individual commands you. Now, interestingly enough, Griffin, they've laid hands on you. Russ, your hands are full, but they've told you back against the wall. I'm on my knees. Oh, that's so. right. Thanks. Yeah. So you yeah. get three plot points. I'll get to that. Blaze, this one tells you up against the wall. I thought we were already against the wall. Uh, you were very close to it. You know, I figured when you came out, I didn't think you just put yourself against the wall. Um, I, I mean, I'm not going to. I got a tail back there. So, I mean, I'm not going up against the wall. I'm back to the wall. So you refuse to put your back against the wall? Well, my back is facing the wall. That's not what I said. <laughs> you know, you're playing with words. <laughs> he's, he's telling you basically put your back against the wall. My tail is on the wall. I, I'm I'm to the wall. <laughs> you want me to? You would you like for me to stuff my tail between Slash my legs? Back, you it's know. not happening. <laughs> oh, here we go. Well, guys, I don't think I'm going to be in trouble anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and I say yeah, it, we're going to go say straight. I say <laughs> it in a manner role. to let him know that yes, I have a tail, unlike you. The individual. The, the dragonborn that you're talking to. Uh, Sean, real Similar quick. To your... uh, sorry, uh, I, I'm trying to pronounce his name, but oh! somebody just redeemed random magic. <laughs> 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 okay. Um. All right. You guys can talk much yourself. I got to add some plot points. Then I got to put that down <laughs> real quick before I forget. And I'm still waiting for a spell. And I'm not even sure it's going to be you guys that cast the spell. Oh, oh I am changing something. Uh, What was it last week that we talked about? DM disadvantage. Um, One of the things that was mentioned by a viewer last week was, because, of course, we just apply DM disadvantage to the next roll usually. What I'm going to do, and viewers are more than welcome to encourage players, but I'm going to let the players, for the most part, decide where the DM disadvantage gets used. And mostly it's a don't use it here because we used it on an NPC and they were like, oh, you know, we would have never wanted that used there, but it was a DM roll. So I will allow the, if I say I'm rolling with disadvantage, if our players very quickly respond with, please don't, that's not a role we would want to see it disadvantaged. Um, I will allow that to happen. Um, uh, so players can overwrite that and whatnot, and viewers can, of course, encourage, you know, don't ever disadvantage this NPC. We like them and don't want to see them die. Things like that. Um, so it's a mild influence, shall we say? You can influence that. Um, let me add on these plot points real quick before I forget. To here. And then we're going to get that well, magic I item I kind of play. got the scene there where, like, kind of in Super Troopers, you know, I can't pull over anymore. <laughs> pulled over man I'm, I'm against the wall man oh man this I driving through the shoulder I can't do it this has gone in a direction that I just was not anticipating oh, oh verdict I chipped you a point I'm sorry about that Where's it the... probably would have been a lot more violent if I hadn't had that quill I almost took a different yes. one and I'm so glad I didn't <laughs> Oh my god. Is... This this would have been a bloodbath right now. <laughs> oh, that's why. I need to go over here. I'm not the wrong one. I prepped another character concept just in case. <laughs> oh, there you go. Well prepared. Well prepared. Okay. I also have one on the back burner. <laughs> oh man, I am the oddball out. My bad. I am not prepared whatsoever. We'll see though. We'll see. Yeah. This could change. Sean's games, right? Always have a back character bear on the burner. I like that. Um, Consequence. It's good. If they're wondering why I'm going around, it's because I uh, forgot to set up the map stream with uh, Verdict's specific points. And so I had to get those in there. Oh, I have a lot. Of, okay. Now, yeah. Whoa, oh, that was out, an out of I'm character, just... Sean. Out of yeah. character. Is this place where they're backing us up against the wall? The magical portion of the wall that you were discussing last show? Um, you, while your character would know nothing about that, yes, it kind of sort of is. Um, it would require some investigation and whatnot to actually... Okay, well, my them. tail's up against it, so does it feel like an actual wall? It does, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, yep. that's all I was wondering. Yep, no, nope. cool. Um, just get up against it and just fall right through. <laughs> like Scooby-Doo. Oh, man, trapdoor. 
Houdini. Whew. <laughs> what the heck? Wow, Unfortunately, as a paladin, I don't have any working knowledge about whether or not I could even trigger that wall. We'll see what happens, though. Uh, well, the one who would hey. is in your little bottle. There you go. Right. That's well, true. unfortunately, here's the problem. It's catch twenty two because right now I'm I'm alive and didn't get stabbed right away. However, now I got to convince the party. So I've already <laughs> talked about I'm talking my way out of one problem. I still got another one to deal with. <laughs> yeah, the trust is 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 faltering right now with the Griff at least. Hey man, you saw the imp. You know he's real. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. true. <laughs> but he's somehow just not here right now. It's Him real. and Anna are both it's real. gone. <laughs> Him and Anna are just suddenly both gone. The, oh, your your plan about being um I can't get over anymore, is somewhat sus as there is room to back up. However, while your tail is touching the tall, I mean a freaking brontosaurus tail might go a hundred feet. I don't know, you know, just like that don't quite qualify. So the individual asking you to back up, is just as correct in what he's saying, as you choose. Go ahead, Brock. I see you. Well, the way I'm picturing it is like my tail's coming down, and it like wraps to the side. So I mean, like literally, there's like. This much space between me and the wall. Ah, okay, cool. No, my back's not touching, but I'm back against the wall. Cool. It's not like the tip of it's touching. Theater of mind is always this murky mirror, so I love it when a player helps me see the world through their eyes because otherwise I can make a judgment call that's way off base. So whatever table you're playing, I always help the other to see through your eyes. Don't try to be right. Just try to help them see so that they can then make judgments together. So perfect. Um, the individual feels a little more comfortable as we'll massage this together. You back up a little bit, but your back's not against the wall. Um, in moments, I would like you to try... You know what? We're going to kind of gloss over this a little bit. I'm going to give you an opportunity to avoid being arrested by these individuals for no reason that you can understand why you'd be being arrested. But make a persuasion roll, the three of you, and we're going to use group 5e dynamics, which means the three of you, two of you must succeed as you work together to try and convince them that you should and not it would, be... And it would be considered that that uh, emissary of peace is still active. It says 10 minutes, so I don't know how long Oh, we're... yeah. It's seconds. Okay. Just seconds at best, yeah. Excellent. And that gives you Just plus five excellent. to your roll? Yeah, it's plus five to... Uh... Oh no! It's, oh, you you grant yourself a plus five yeah. bonus to charisma percent. So I'm currently at a plus nine. Okay. So we're just waiting right now on verdict and verdict. You get plus nine. Yeah, I'm also gonna throw a bunch of uh, plot points in there. Uh, I think I want to throw ten at it. All right. Wow. Well, <laughs> he was coaching us not to hold on to them, so I'm just yeah. gonna. Now's a great time. You're doing the right thing. <laughs> I think you're half with the guards and half with the party, and that that that'll that'll have me use them at a good time. You know, and I I got to give the eye props on this one, uh, because the DC was a twenty. Normally, I don't give you what the DCs were, but that puts two of you at twenty, so two of you hit the DC. It takes a little bit. Um, the conversation goes on for quite a while. They want to make sure about weapons and such. Now. He, he Russ has got nothing. How about you, Griffin? Are you armed? Not at the moment. Not okay. at the moment. Brock, um, I'm assuming... I have I have my whip on my hip and my daggers are hidden. Okay. Um, you're not being felt over and whatnot. So we're gonna assume that the whip they assume is part of the show. A um, little bit of conversation with Arimathea speaking from the other side that he would need his whip for part of the show. And moments later, these dragonborn leave you once again the man with the tray is left with the three of you arimathea brings some of the other circus workers you know to back to the show in other words guys kind of clear house we the last one we want to do is create trouble here you see her give a kind of sour look towards the three of you as she takes others back in you've successfully maintained russ not being arrested but of course the question remains where is Anna? And that is exactly what this individual with a tray of food and a spilled glass that's gone over the side is asking where your friend is. And of course, that's what Griffin and Blaze might want to know as well. So Virg's going to turn to the guy with the tray. 
and he's not even going to give him a chance to speak much. He's going to take a, the bottle in his hand with his hand still wrapped around as much as he can. He's going to put it in his satchel and the quill in a small pocket in his pants line. And he's just going to grab the tray and be like, oh, this is fantastic. What excellent timing. Oh, and the whole confusion with all that stuff. And I was so worried. And listen, you did a great job and I really appreciate your time. I should get these back to, to the person you're actually inquiring about. She's actually over by our tents. You have a great night. And I'm just going to try and spin around and walk away with the tray in hand. Griff is and definitely I will do gonna... a performance role for that if it needs to be. <laughs> Griff, Griff, is, Griff is definitely going to call this out. Um, he's going to go ahead and say, Oi, where the fuck do you think you're going? I'm no, going to no, drop no. those 10 plot points. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, no, no. Where the hell do you think you're going? He didn't even answer me question. Plot I'm going to keep for... walking with my tray and wave my hand and be like, Come on, we'll catch up. Griff. Griff is going to fly and then land right in front of him. Oh, man. <laughs> Blaze, what are you doing? I'm going to intermediate between them. <laughs> so <clears throat> Griff does right. this and, elegant kind of like hop, walk, flight in the air and lands right in yeah. front of him because with his flight speed, he absolutely can outdo Russ. No problem whatsoever. And Blaze, you just run and catch up, leaving the man who previously had the trade just kind of standing there watching you go partway back towards this courtyard where the tents are so that you can have the conversation. Go ahead, Blaze, interject. Um, I'm, I'm going to like basically try to step between them and say, this is a conversation that can be had inside the tent. And at this point, I'm going to not try to intimidate Griff, but basically know, hey, get to step in that direction. Murray's going to lean into both of them with a tray in his hand. Are you sure you want to talk out of try to talk yourselves out of getting arrested a second time? Or can we do this in private? Griff uh, looks at both Blaze and Verdict. Gives like, not like a dirty look like I'm going to kill both of you, but like a something is seriously up and why am I the only one that kind of seems like something is wrong here? Like, he feels like, Griff feels like he's alone in this matter at the moment. And then he's like, snuffs, turns around, and just like, flies back to to uh, the tent. Angrily. Just pissed. Alright. <laughs> he's pissed. Griffin, what are you doing with that? I think that requires a rust response, right? So I'm going to hold on to the train and be like, so we're going that way? <laughs> we're going that way now? To the tent. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like ignoring you, Griff. Well, I'm flying at this point. All right. I, cool. didn't, I didn't care about the responses. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. I'm yeah, gonna, no, that's, I'm going to keep whole... walking. I'm going to stuff yeah. my mouth a little bit more. I'm going to offer the tray to Blaze. <laughs> you offer the tray to Blaze. I have a question for you. When you're using your guidance, is that a spell? What do you mean guidance? Earlier you're on, your about... ability to uh, persuade a... Is that just an ability check, or do you actually have to cast a spell? It's it's just a uh, bonus action ability. It's channel okay, divinity it's in this area piece. It's the plus five during uh, persuasions. Cool. All right, I wasn't sure if that was actually casting a spell or not, because I was like, ooh, wild magic. All right, so, yep, no problem, no ability check. So Griffin takes to the air once more, launching up. And you two head into the tent as this happens. Griff, where, where is your goal to fly to, your intent? Oh, no, I said I, was, I wanted to fly back to the tent. We're, oh. we're going to hash this out inside the tent. Uh, yeah. I thought maybe he, like he was going to do like an murder, aerial thing first you know. or, you know, maybe like just he's keeping it low to the ground then. All right. Yeah. I, I was kind of like, you know, hey, as a DM, I'm always looking to see if there's something I can get away with. Come on. you know, Same as you <laughs> players. Um, great. You go f soaring into the tent first. Ten foot wingspan pulled in at the last moment to get through the doorway. Moments later, they catch up with you inside the tent. And Aramathea, 
literally is like right there waiting. When the two of you walk through, she's already, you know, talking to Griffin. Basically, it's that what the hell look on her face as she asks you, what was all that about? We're here as guests. She talking to, to Griff or the, the three two? of you? She waited oh, till basically, of yeah. That's why I say she's already talking to Griff when gotcha. these two walk in. I'm just before we commence on the answer to this. Is there anyone in the tent besides the three of us and Aramathia? You are in a large, again, central tent. So yeah, there's people all around because it is a courtyard at the end of the day. So it's not the full circus. They were able to set up one tent and along some of the walls, actually not near the walls, in from that because they don't want things too close to the walls they were able to set up some of the other wagons. You brought a minor component of the larger circus. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, in a loud booming voice, just yell and snarl and just clear the tent. Ooh, make an intimidation roll. Yeah. And I'm going to add five to that. Dude. There you go. Okay. There you go. I'm getting drill instructor vibes right now. Dude. I'm mo like <laughs> moments later, without even Arimathea saying something, many individuals start scattering away and whatnot. The few that remain, Arimathea says, leave us to. And those individuals leave. You do notice that one individual far up on the upper left, who you recognize as Grognak, the one that handles the large animals in the circus doesn't leave. You're down here at the southern tip. Let's say you entered at this door over here because basically, again, they set up the one tent to do all the show for the emperor. Um, Gronach does not leave. He stays over near the other door. Uh, if our voices aren't raised, is it something he's going to be able to nope. listen in on? No. Okay, then I'm not Should worried not about him. Sure. I was trying to narrow it down to either the three of us or the three of us in Arimathea. I'm okay if she's around. Yeah, she hasn't left. <laughs> I didn't figure she so, would. You, yeah, awesomeness of you. Um, how many plot points did you throw at that so I can take those off real quick? Uh, five. Perfect. Okay. Um, Arimathea says, and my question remains, what happened out there? So in one fluid motion, Verdict's going to, his face is going to kind of change from like cramming his face acting like he was really hungry. And he's going to do this. And he's actually going to casually toss the tray aside onto the floor. And he's going to drop down into an Indian stance. He's going to curl his legs up. And I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to reach into the pouch. And I'm just going to hold it up openly to show them with my back kind of away from the open part of the tent. I'm just going to sit there quietly like this. Yeah. It's good that he ate. his tummy's rumbling as he opens this up and shows you all this bottle inside it. I'm assuming you have the quill elsewhere, just the bottles in the satchel. The quill's in my pocket. Yeah. It's just in a little tiny side pocket in my pants. Uh, Griff is going to see that and just instantly be like, hey, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? I, I don't know. The imp's part of this somehow... I've known Anna since I was small. She trained me to be a ranger long, long ago. I'm 50 winners now, but... As he says this, you don't need to make a perception roll anymore. You realize the thing moving inside the bottle is Anna. <laughs> I ask how this came about. The little imp twit got out and started running around. He cast some spell that was pulling me into the bottle. Anna interfered, and now somehow she's taken my place in this bottle. Griff kind of uh, takes a moment, like just like turns around, takes a nice breath, trying to decide like if he even believes Verdict, uh, and then turns back and says, Okay, let me get this straight. Anna's in that bottle, correct? I'm going to hold it up a little bit more clearly to the light. Okay. Okay. Is she trapped or is it at will? What? Like, can she get out? 
I'll be honest with you. I'm a paladin by trade. This is unusual for me. I've avoided giving her this bottle for more than 20 years. As far as I can tell, it's probably at least semi-permanent for the moment. I don't have the feeling just holding this thing that I could just pull it out and shake her out like she's sugar. Is she is she at least safe? Seems to be. DM, could you give us an idea of like what she's doing in there? Like I can. I also actually need to retcon one minor thing. Uh that twenty year statement is a new one to me and actually would not jive, so I will work with the oh, player not on that one okay. separately. So we'll so, have to movie wind yeah, me that. So because, just long time, yeah. he said. You know, but yeah. he goes, I you know, had this with me, avoided giving it to her for a long time. Whatever that means yeah. at this moment. Um so <laughs> so uh Anna's inside the bottle and she's kind of holding up her bow on one hand and whatnot and like tapping on the bottle and you know trying to get all of your attention. So we focus in, we lean into yeah. the bottle. Yeah. Is she, Is she able to in? communicate? You by realize tapping? she's like trying to speak, but you can't hear anything. Even when you like get really close, you can't hear anything beyond the bottle. And then she you know, looks at you and she's like and she's like motioning towards the bottle at the top. Oh. She's at the bottom of this uh, long bottle. I asked there. him if I could see the bottle. Um, he's going to casually lift his hand up and offer it. Am I able to pull, pull the top off? Make a strength roll for me. You grind on this thing, and you have it, and you are sure that you have a solid grip. You are confident that it's like if this thing could be opened, you'd be able to open it. You're like, there is no way. There is something magic here that's holding this simple little what looks like a cork with a metal top on top of it in place. You're like, there is no way. In fact, it almost feels like the bottle flexes slightly as you're twisting on it. You're like, you're, you're, you feel you've got a good strong grip on it. There's something so it probably magic. wouldn't be any use in taking it up and you can you can certainly try. <laughs> I'm I'm always down All with right. trying. So yeah, is he heck? is he oh action? He starts chewing on it and whatnot, and as he does so when he gets all done, you actually see that the cork has dents from his teeth in it. Now you realize once again, just like with the bottle flexing. You should have been able to just rip the cork right off. I mean, it shouldn't have even been an issue. You were able to dent it and whatnot, but you did not rip it apart. So you, again, reinforces this is something magical, not something that can physically be overcome. I explained that to the others standing there with me as like, this isn't coming open. We, we've we got to find some other some other means here. Um, right. I like peer in and like motion to her like, you know, hey, we can't. I, you know, not working. Obviously, if we can't hear her, she probably can't hear us. Um, but maybe I can gesture so she understands we were trying to open it and it's not opening. She seems miffed, upset before you actually see her move away from the side of the glass and she becomes a, um, a fuzzy figure as she moves away towards something in the middle and it almost looks like her figure sits down in the middle and you realize as you tip this thing she does not fly all about it's got its own gravity inside it literally you can hold the bottle upside down which maybe you guys try and whatnot and she's upside down but it seems like she's stable inside it at least safe smack it like a bottle of ketchup <laughs> you know, moment later you're like pop 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 and as you do so, she comes back to the side of the glass and starts yelling at you. You know, you could just see her like, Arr! so clearly maybe she can hear tapping on the glass is what it is. If so, maybe you guys so, know like secret code. <laughs> so I'll hand the bottle back to back to uh, verdict <clears throat> and say, I, I we got to find another way. I've been trying to figure out the key to the curse the entire time the imp was there he slowly at first would do as i asked and uh as time passed he would find his way out 
on his own. No real explanation. He kept warning me that eventually I'd be the one that would be in the bottle. I've been compelled to give it to Anna, and I'm not sure how it relates. She saved me a long time ago. Twice. And I could feel the compilation. It had to be magical or divine or something that wanted me to give the bottle, but I just knew something bad might happen. But eventually I just couldn't avoid it anymore. So he's going to slowly put it in the satchel and close the flap very gently. We were investigating the wall because Anna noticed something unusual about it. It opens. As you are putting it in, your tummy rumbles again and you feel like, you know, like, man, maybe you need to use the bathroom or something, you know, it's like, and you guys hear him belch really loud as he does this. Mm-hmm. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm not sure. That's unusual. And it's right about then he's saying that's unusual when the tent flap opens and there are one of the individuals, a long, thin individual, the same olive-colored skin, comes in, introduces himself quickly, says, oh, just the people I was hoping to see. Arimathea looks over and you see her bow from the waist, you know, averting her eyes. She says, yes, may I help you? And there's a greeting that happens and you realize quickly this is somebody from the Imperial Court. He explains that the Emperor has requested your presence. And he's not looking at Arimathea. He's looking directly at Blaze. He says, if you'll please follow me. So like only my presence? <clears throat> says the Emperor has requested you, sir. Uh, I look at the other guys and say, um, let's go. F- I'll go find out what this is all about. Seem to be a popular dude. And uh, I motion for the guy to lead the way. And Arimathea, as you're preparing to go, says, um, well, my performers aren't generally separated from the circus. And I'd like each of you to make an insight roll for me, please. All right. Where the heck is it? There you are. Thirteen seems to be a popular number. Let's see if anybody wants yeah. it. And then we get the mighty verdict. You'll have to. I was about to say. Oh, I see. That's because. That's odd. It says verdict on there. Oh, that must be coming from D and D Beyond. But Fenrir up there. Weird. Yep. Yep. Weird. Um. We'll have to find a way to fix that. Um. You notice that. Verdict notices that. Arimathea seems unduly interested the minute they're trying to separate off Blaze from everybody else and seems intent on trying to keep him here. Um, This exchange goes on for just a moment longer and she says, well, perhaps after the show tonight. And the man looks at her and says, it is not a custom here for the emperor's invitation to be refused lightly. I dare say it would probably not be the most beneficial approach. Perhaps there is something that you need? And he looks at Arimathea. She says, oh, well, of course, you know, the circus always has many needs, but I'm just more concerned for my people, of course, and I'm sure the emperor would like to see them at their very best, and we would need to practice. The man says, I don't believe that the Emperor is concerned with that at the moment. Perhaps just seeing this one, and he motions again towards Blaze, will be enough. Perhaps your circus does not even need to remain here. She says, oh, no, 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 we we definitely want to perform. We definitely would like to perform. And, you know, it would be a shame if if we left because, of course, our, our performers would leave with us. And you all catch the hint of a smile on his face as he says, The comings and goings, of course, are at the invitation and dismissal of the Emperor himself. Please, perhaps you don't wish to come alone, is that your 
major concern. And she says, well, again, if I could come, I would be most glad to accompany, you know, Master Blaze here. Indiana Blaze rarely does any shows on his own, and, you know, I, I would prefer to come with him. Do you guys want to do anything while this conversation is going on? Griff is going to go ahead and say, Oi, what about us? And points at, you know, himself and Verdict. <clears throat> Verdict's going to stand up and uh, he's going to fold his hands together. And he's going to kind of incline his head a little bit and go, it would be most gracious of you to allow us to accompany him. And for no other reason than we have been very much looking forward to presenting ourselves to the Emperor in any case. Mm, let's see, are you doing anything special beyond talking to try and convince this guy? I mean, I'm rolling that persuasion roll while it still lasts. How about you, Griffin? Anything special that you're doing to persuade this guy? You're just uh, oh, sticking man. to uh, I think, yeah, Griffin's going to say one more thing after after Verdict finished his uh, sentence and is going to say, perhaps he might be willing to take a look at probably something he's never seen before myself. Uh, meaning, of course, I've got wings and I'm sure somebody wants to see that, right? <laughs> As you do, uh, I will... The man stops and says, Very well. The <sighs> four of you may come. I cannot guarantee that the Emperor will have time to see you. However, as long as this... And he says the word Master strangely. Master Indiana Blaze is coming at the Emperor's request. Who am I? to say no. He leads you away from the tent inside the palace and you get a feel for the first time of how big this place is. You are literally in a minor courtyard. You realize it's not just the front of a building, it's like the front of a city. You walk in through this wall, up these steps through this wall, and you come out into another courtyard at a higher level. There's multiple buildings off to the right and left. You follow this redstone path towards a larger structure. Now you're noticing numerous individuals here. There are dragonborn, and there are numerous humans moving about. There's something strange about the individual that's le leading you. And Brock, you haven't quite placed your finger yet on what it is, but there's something about him. You walk through the corridor. Arimathea gently whispers to you all very quickly and says, remember, Bow from the waist. Avoid all eye contact if we wish to leave here alive. You're led up this long pathway, down a, a turn, another one, and as you are led through this building sequence to this main one at the end, the steps turn to gold. Literal, it looks like gold. You head up these golden steps into gilded golden filigree, gilded hallways. You progress on for at least 10 minutes to give you a sensation of how far you have walked before you get to a final set of double doors of which the hallway is now lined with these dragonborn, each one armed, some wielding glaives, some wielding halberds, others with swords, standing at attention. Two tall, thin individuals, similar to the one that you have just worked with, open the doors. And as you do so, Brock, I would like you to make a nature check for me, please. Um, I had a question first. <clears throat> Fire off. Um, before we go into this room, is this, to see the Emperor, is this something where I would have a knowledge of, you know, clearly this isn't a place where you're supposed to take weapons like what I would I consider handing off my weapons prior to going in how much cultural background do you have from working with um humans and whatnot or is it uh, just around the dragonborn that you've spent most of your no time? no I've been all over uh as a basically a hired assassin okay. so learning customs and trying to fit in different places then it does seem like if you're re 
meeting anybody of stature, weapons are usually not something that you would bring unless you are invited to do so. So would there be a place before we enter in to hand those off or... You make a request of the tall man leading you because it seems most proper to follow whatever customs they have. And the individual turns back to you and says, Have you been trained? For you are more courteous than many of these other individuals. Now, of course, Arimathea doesn't look like she has any weapons on her at all. Griffin, um, and again, I don't think you have anything visible, right? I mean, even the rod, the rod I believe you left with because you never got it from Robin yet. The king, right. I should say. And whatnot. <laughs> Correct. So, so the only one that looks like they have weapons, <coughs> if you consider a whip a weapon, would be Brock. Um, you make the request and he says, what weapons do you refer to? I, I just let him know I have the whip and I have a couple daggers and I just wanted, I didn't want to enter into a place where it was not allowed and create an issue there. So he, I was going to notify ahead of time. He motions to one of the guards near the doors who with military precision steps out, makes a perfect right hand turn, takes two marching steps forward and then presents his hand towards you. And you notice it is the same again, a clawed dragonborn hand, but the hand itself appears a little less. The claws are not quite as long as yours and whatnot. Again, almost like, He's dragonborn, but there's something very different here. Um, almost human-sized compared to you, which yours are a little bit larger. Your claw is more reach. Do you wish to put your weapons and whatnot into his hands? Yeah, I'll go ahead and hand them over. Any of the rest of you taking advantage of this as you see Blaze doing this? Or anything that's hidden away? Okay. Nope. And with that, he hands over his weapons, and you head inside. Heading up this long, and I mean long, a room like this probably should not exist. You're like, there are columns holding up the roof above you. You approach along, and you can notice, literally, for a room that's probably 100 feet wide, maybe two to 300 long, that's how huge this is. There, you pass by columns, and you can see off to the far sides, you know, 50 feet to the right, 50 feet to the left. You can notice that there are individuals here and there, fewer guards than were stationed outside, Yet, you are certainly not alone. This is not an empty room. It is overwhelmingly elegant. Your footsteps echo into the distance. Here, there is a carpet that leads you all the way towards a raised dais at the end. There are three other individuals that are waiting. The tall, thin man turns to each of you and he says, As you approach the emperor, you must approach on your knees and you will prostrate yourself before you are commanded to rise. You will never speak directly to the emperor, but to his mouthpiece. The individual will reply for the emperor. Remember, you must never look the emperor in the eyes. Arimathea says, we understand, and she gets on her knees. Do you do likewise, or do you wish to not do this? Verdict will lower his head, go down on his knees and just kind of fold his forearms down over the tops of his thighs. Griff is uh, slow to react to all this because he's just really just baffled about all these weird customs uh, of these humans. So, uh, But he eventually gets to his knees, uh, though he doesn't like it, though. How about you, Blaze? Yeah, it's the custom. I'll follow. Yeah. And you, again, the leader that has told you of this does the same thing, literally on his knees. And at the appropriate time, you you know, it's so slow and grinding to walk on your knees. But now you realize why the carpet's here. It's incredibly cushioned to help you as you go forward. So you realize this truly is a custom here. You know, they have every preparation in place. And you reach a point where he says, and prostrate. And he puts himself forward and down, face down on the ground. You do the same? Verdict's going to sigh deeply. <sighs> again, down. again, Griff is the last to go down, but he goes down. Okay. Um, 
you have your hands out before you as he does, your face is to the ground and whatnot, your beak kind of turned over to the side a little bit, unless you want to just go beak down, which up to you, you tell me. Is it beak to the side or beak down? Uh, beak to the side. Beak to the side. To the side. Beak to the side, your little eyeball looking up at the ceiling above you and whatnot as you do so. And then you hear a voice ring out. Brock, you have advantage on this roll, and I need you to make that nature roll for me now, please. I did. Oh, I got to roll it twice, though. Hold on a second. Right. Oh, yes, I see it there on the screen. Yeah, I like that second one better. <laughs> I do, too. 17 you sure you don't want to take the first one? Come on. The smell. Actually, if I didn't have advantage, I would have taken the first one. <laughs> <clears throat> you have met in all your travels again you talked about being numerous places and whatnot you have smelled goblin before the rug is thick with it it's on the air um the voice speaks from in front of you and says the emperor bids you welcome you may rise. And you see the person next to you, as you kind of look, rises to their knees and waits, head bowed. Do you do likewise? Or do you get stand right up? Uh, I'll stand up. I, I kind of keep my head somewhat down so it looks like I'm looking down and not making eye contact. But I'm trying to scan the room and see who all we have in there. Okay. Vertical just intimate what the leader's doing. Okay, so you're staying on your knees as you yeah. sit up. Yeah. Griffin? Yep. Uh, Griffin is, again, the last one to get up because this is all new to him. He kind of almost so, wants to stand up, but then he catches himself. He's like, oh, shit, shouldn't have done that. So he stays on his knees. So Blaze is the one that stands up fully, correct, Blaze? Is that not what the other guy did? Correct, that is not. He said rise. He, Yes, but he only got to his knees. That's why you saw the. Human oh, health. I misunderstood then. Okay. No, I would have. I would have followed with. Yep. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, because the voice from in front said "rise," but the individual only got to their knees. Um. So you do likewise. Each of you in your own turn. Griffin going last and whatnot as he kind of rotates his big old head around. You know, flip the other way. <laughs> you know, see what's going on, and then gets to his knees as well. You see. With your head bowed and whatnot, Brock, you can see quickly to the right and the left. And Griffin, you actually had a little bit better view because you had to swing your whole head to kind of look really quickly. And you all notice that there are more guards up here similar to outside the door where there was a congestion of guards. They become more thick. Off to the shadows of the dais on the right and left, there's easily a half dozen guards. <clears throat> Additional to that, there's a group of individuals dressed in finery long, thin outfits, pant-like outfits. But this is not warriors. These are, you would consider them in different places, either nobles or nobility of some sort because these clothes are made of silks and light fabrics. Further back, set back from you, is what looks like an indoor tent and whatnot. You can notice all this, but you can't notice more than that until you raise your head. The voice says, it is good that you follow our customs. The emperor bids you stand. And with that, the leader stands, and you following suit, each of you stand. The emperor asks why you have not come alone, Indiana Blaze. Um, without... Without looking him in the eyes, I speak to the mouth. Which direction is the mouthpiece in? From your facing to the left of what appears to be the tent. Okay, so I turn to the left and kind of head still down, but kind of trying to get a peripheral view forward to and speak to um, <clears throat> and just say um, I, I chose to attend at the calling. Um my companions. There's a, uh, there's they a they can speak for themselves. As you turn away from the emperor to face the mouthpiece. Um, and as you start speaking, identifying what's going on, the mouthpiece replies and tells you this man talking um, says, always face the emperor. You are his guest. We are all 
his honored guests here. And as he says this, he bows from the waist, you know, faces the tent, and while bowing, then turns back to you and then stands up again. Okay, so then I face back to the tent and say, very well, as is custom, so shall I follow. And I say, I can only speak for myself. I was summoned and I came. The man leans in, you see, almost like he's listening to a voice that you can't hear, then comes out and says, The Emperor extends his welcome to you, the son of dragons, and asks if you are of the lineage that once walked in Argonesson. Now, you know that it's common knowledge of the world, Argonesson is another continent. It's actually where the uh, dragons can be found. I hope I'm remembering that right. And that was in the southeast? Yes. Far. Well, no, you come from Kabara, and that's part of this continent. He's referring to an entire another continent, like you being in the USA and somebody referring to Africa. Okay, so then my answer to him would be no. Ah, I see. So then who... And again, the mouthpiece is the one speaking. Who created you? Um, I was, I was born. Uh, I was not created. My ancestry is from the dragon line, but not from the place where you speak of. Are there more of your kind there? There are. How many? What numbers? Uh, I don't have numbers. I only have uh, those that I am aware of in my clan. So you are part of the one of the 13 nations. Now, what he's referring to is after the Great War, Corvair, which had previously been ruled by Gal, um, Galifar, Am I saying that right? Yeah, I believe it's Galifar. Um, had been sp um, redivided into 13 separate nations because during the war, the Thronehold Wars and whatnot, or the Thronehold Treaty, recognized certain people who had encroached onto Corvair. The goblins are their own nation now. Um, right nearby, right where you live, um, the Eldine Reaches are now their own nation as well. What was once part of on there. So all the way in the lower east, Kabar is now considered its own as well. Um, but those are uh, human determinations, if you will. I just want to give you guys some of the backstory there so that you understood this. He continues to drill you almost on military information before finally coming to a, a true point. During this, Arimathea stays mostly quiet and says, The Emperor would like to extend his invitation for Indiana Blaze to stay. The reason this stands out, before Indiana gets a chance to respond, Arimathea makes this little <clears throat> sound as if trying to get the attention of the long, thin one that brought you in. And she does this twice. You know, this is kind of like a little puff of breath. And you realize, all of you, for the first time, that during this entire conversation, none has spoken directly to any of you as if not recognizing your presence, only the presence of the dragonborn here. I'm giving you an opportunity in case any of you want to respond or do anything. Really? Nothing, Griff? <laughs> <laughs> Griff knows. Listen, Griff, uh, Griff knows when to speak and when not to speak and in this moment when there is guards that are clearly outnumbering us and clearly this man this emperor in front of us is you know powerful he's well aware of of rulers and what they're capable of so at the moment he's going to stay silent <laughs> i love it i love so, it so oh, no this is going too smooth we gotta we gotta fix this uh, let, me, <laughs> let me rearrange this for you guys. Oh, man. So, Verdict's just going to, uh, he's going to keep his head down, but he's going to move his mouth 
kind of in the direction intentionally of of, of Blaze. And he's just going to speak Anna. And that's all he's going to say. Now, can they hear you? I mean, I don't know how good. I'm assuming his hearing's decent. But I'm not sure if anyone else can hear me. I'm assuming um, we're all kind of together visually like in the mind's eye. I'm assuming there's there's a couple of us in one line and a couple of us in here, another. Here's here's what I'm going to ask on this, Sean. Mm-hmm. Um, clearly, like with, with Griff, we've been together, group experience longer. So I might be able to take a hint or something like that from him. I might be able to catch a cue from him because of the experience we've had together. I don't, I, am I going to get this same thing from, from him? Uh, yes. Um, from that's total up to you guys. That's role playing. You don't need a DM. Yeah, I mean, I can verbally channel that, that deep importance into it, but I mean, it's not magical. So I don't think I could really like ping your mind with it. It's just kind of hoping that you feel the, the tension coming off me. That's, that's all I can really do. I, Cause I mean, I hear you, but I, I would say as the character, I'm not really sure what you want me to do with this information. <laughs> also not a bad thing. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, I'm going to kind of kind of look back because I, I picture him kind of back behind me at an angle maybe and just kind of nod like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of her. Um, but I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know the direction he was. He's trying to get me to go in here, and I'm, I'm not trying to cross any lines here in front of the emperor. That's going to create a commotion. Um, I'm trying to find out what the emperor wants and go from there. Shot in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That's I all like it was. It. Shot in the dark. Cast um, a spell. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. We're all, yeah, I saw we're that too. all <laughs> waiting Shadow. for this cast a spell. It's like I know something's gonna. <laughs> you know, Shave, we're we're right there with you. It does seem kind of sketchy. It's like he seems to be pushing for this over mm-hmm. and over. The invitation to the Dragonborn to extend his stay. It seems that Arimathea is trying to prevent it. Shall we say, mm-hmm. get some attention. The person who led you in here does not pick up on Arimathea's little coughs at all, nor do they respond to the whisper if they heard it, a verdict. Go ahead, verdict. Can I use divine sense, or is that like, is that obvious? Like, I'm not sure how I would intonate that. Maybe just with a hand motion, or would I just... I believe divine sense says in the description you gotta put your hand to the floor, if I remember correctly. I might be wrong. I'm... It might be just something that we role evil. played a lot. Um, yeah, it just it doesn't say that I actually then, it just says as an action you can detect good and evil. Then just just as an action, that might have just been something that we role played previously. There was always a. So uh, I'm just gonna kind of close my eyes while I'm bowed. Floor. Yeah, I'm just yeah. gonna close my eyes while my head's bowed and uh, see if I detect any good or evil. Um, I'm picturing the entire thing. How far does it radiate? How many feet? 60 feet. Oh, 60 feet. Um, so that'd basically be this room down a little bit. Yeah. Whoa. Shite. I hadn't expected you to do that. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you get a wickedly strong sense of evil from to right. that kind in of, the direction that kind of, of the emperor, but down. Right at the far edges, um, there is something radiating evil in that direction, but not him below him. So diagonally going down, coming from you. And Divine Sense, doesn't that tell you whether it's like Celestial, Fae, or... Yeah, it gives me a, it gives me at least an archetypal understanding. So Celestial, Fiend, Undead. It's a cross between Undead... And uh, you get th- there's something else there with it. Um, I don't think you can detect abomination, but that's the idea. There's something twisted and undead in that direction. Something that just 
scores against all life. In the meantime, Blaze, one of the things um that you also I actually had you um when I'd asked you on the carpet to make a nature check, that was actually the second time. I need you to get the original nature check done. Um, I the original was five. Yeah, but you had advantage on the second one, so we gave you a 17. So go ahead and just make an original. Just give me a roll for nature, please. Okay. Ten. Ten. So when you were walking in, something that had occurred to you with all the gold steps and the doors and whatnot was a lack of growing things here. Now, I say that because you as a druid are used to looking for various things, and you've passed potted trees, you've passed certain flowers and whatnot, but you realize that everything appears superficial as if the only things that grow here are like little plants. There's nothing with deep roots. Usually, even in the human-made cities, you're able to sense the life underneath. The trees that would be on a street have roots that reach down into the earth, and yet it feels almost like a place devoid of life, and that's when I use the term artificial, almost like the only life here is what you see is what you get rather than the deep earth life that you're used to sensing throughout much of the world. Even if you went below ground, you would sense it. There's always a radiance of life that is missing here. And you as a druid sense it intrinsically. Okay. And also, am I able to smell the direction of the, you said I smelled goblin? Goblin. Radiant most strongly from the carpet, which is why you had had a uh, advantage on the roll then. But you realize it's in the very air too. Now, whether that's just from the carpet being used or something else, but you're like the entire place has this very, very faint, like like perfume of somebody that had passed by a while ago. If it wasn't, you know, it's your draconic abilities that give this to you. Um, Griffin, have you kept your head maintained low this whole time? Uh, yes, for the, for the whole time, because he's, believe it or not, kind of a little worried, especially after that odd questioning. Okay. Your, I need you to make a constitution save for me, please, Verdict. Oh, Oh, good, because if that didn't come soon, I was going to perform it anyway. <laughs> I was literally going to fake it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Constitution. Well, we know it's not disease then. Bonk. Constitution, okay. You with that roll? Uh, no. I'm going to add three to that. Make it a 15? Okay. Yep. Let me adjust your things. As you do so, there's a loud rumbling from your stomach once more, and you feel like you need to expel the gas from your rear end. However, you're able to pinch your butt cheeks and like hold it in as your stomach just continues to writhe in this pain. It's just been getting worse and worse and worse ever since you ate that food. And literally, it feels like, I mean, there's just something crawling around in your intestines now. Oh, no. All right. Um, I'd like to perform a uh, another check. I'm gonna I'm gonna tip to to act. I'm, I'm gonna grab myself and I'm like, oh no, oh, and I'm just gonna start writhing down on the floor like I'm in serious serious pain. Well, the pain are well, yeah. Okay, make a performance roll, buddy. Oh my. And I'm going to add another three to that one as well. Oh, my. Um, all right, so he's rolling around on the ground, everybody. What are you doing? What are your reactions? Do you, do you react? Do you ignore it? Do you... Uh, Griff... No Griff... Get like, me out under, of here! <laughs> Griff, under his breath, is like, Oh, shite. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you you could just let out all the gas if you would like. Oh, no. no. <laughs> Don't do that. Please. Not yet. <laughs> okay. We're so dead. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> there seems like Upfront does not seem to take this well. Um, many of those individuals, there's 
subtle gasps, horrors. Anna whispers, what are you doing? And, um, you know, as you're writhing around, clearly in pain. I mean, you know, you obviously can't control this. You're in serious pain. Something's going on. The man, the person who led you in there, you can kind of catch out of the corner of your eyes. He looks, you know, you know, kind of like up towards the front. What's the mouthpiece going to do in all this? And the mouthpiece leans in for a moment, comes back, and then whispers to one of the nobles, and some of the individuals leave the room, and one of them runs, not runs, moves with haste in a very dignified manner. Dignified haste towards one of the um, dragonborn guards, and you quickly realize some of the dragonborn guards have are moving in from both directions towards your group. How do you wish to respond? I speak up towards the uh, towards the mouthpiece, still keeping my focus downwards or straight forward, and say um, that uh, basically I'll I'll take the audience with the uh, with the emperor and, and answer the questions that he he may have uh, if he wants to go ahead and permit my companions to return back to their quarters. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Griff kind of wants to, like, under his breath, tell, uh, just say to Blaze, what are you doing? (laughs) You say under your breath, you know, which seems to be somewhat okay because, again, you know, the whisper got ignored earlier and whatnot with your faces down. And as this is happening, the guards are coming in. Verdict, you're rolling around on the ground, you know, in pain. Um, you can see these now you can all see because again it's easier to see all the dragonborn faces now so you've got about three dragonborns coming in from the left near verdict three dragonborn in from the right and who are approaching you again with um haste and dignity at the same time brought blaze has made his request verdict what are you doing just continuing Verdict's gonna like i'm he's really trying to sell this and he feels some real pain so he's gonna kind of lurch over and he's thinking about all the time he was he spent in the military and he's he's gonna reach up and grasp blaze's ankle and be like medic oh great emperor please grant us leave so we can tend to whatever this is i could return him shortly once he helps me there's a voice from the front and it's the same mouthpiece that says the emperor has heard your request master indiana and he will gladly, and the voice stops mid-speech. There's a pause as the guards come in and start helping Verdict to his feet, picking him up under each arm. And Griffin, you notice that these other three look at you on your side, and as if pausing when the voice stops, as if waiting. The other ones have you hauled up between them, Verdict. The Emperor, by his grace and mercy, he who rises with the sun, has given mercy upon you all and will bid you to his personal medics and see that you are taken care of. He accepts Master Blaze's request. And with that, Anna, Griffin, and Verdict seem to be being led out, unless Verdict wants to hang on to Blaze or something like that. I'm not gonna say anymore. I'm just gonna like be like this, and I'm. Can I make a uh, a grapple roll just to try to put as much strength on that ankle as possible before I let go? I want to really get the point home right now. You will have disadvantage since they were grabbing you under each arm to pick you up. Yep. Um <laughs> So yeah, go right ahead. This is gonna be like probably my lowest roll tonight. I feel this coming. Maybe it'll be awesome. <laughs> I hope you get an awesome one, man. <laughs> Nothing's popped right. up on the screen yet, so. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Right. Freaking awesome. <laughs> Alrighty then. You have advantage. Roll again. <laughs> say that. Say that more often. Oh, an 11 and a 19. Brock, I would like you to make an uh, acrobatics check for me, please. And with that, 
Brock, who's standing there, when they pull up Verdict, Verdict doesn't <laughs> let go and pulls the Dragonborn off balance, who falls over. Griffin, make an acrobatics check. Let's see if he falls into you or not. Oh, God. Oh, God, this is a mess. Okay. Um... <laughs> You're able to just dodge the big guy as he falls right to where you were, knocked over by Verdict, who is still holding on to his ankle as much as possible. There's a gasp, and the guards now rush in, grab you as you step to the side, Griffin. They grab you, worried that maybe this is a possible attack. Suddenly everything's moving and whatnot, right when they were being announced to take him you know, to safety and mercy. And with that, the third guard comes in, wrenches against Verdict's hand, so this will be an opposed grapple check while he hangs on to... <laughs> okay. Verdict's well, making right. such a great impression right now on the group. Such a great impression. <laughs> the things a paladin has to do for redemption. Arimathea is Apparently. obviously <laughs> upset. Um, go ahead and make your roll, please, uh, Verdict. It's a cool. I'm gonna add the last four of my inspiration points to that, or my plot points to that. Okay, well then, all right. I I was rolling with advantage. You tied him though. I just didn't think I needed the advantage. And turns out, wow. So literally, Brock, he's hanging on to you as these guards start dragging him away, and he's dragging, hanging on to the ankle because they didn't snap him off. He literally is is just. Lurched, latched onto them. Griffin, they have you under the arms unless you want to try to wrestle to get away from the guards, or are you willing to be led by them? Uh, at this very moment, believe it or not, Griffin is actually willing to let let them just take me out of here. Uh, he's not about to try something with these guys right now. Yeah, I, from any normal concept, it's like, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, I've, I've, I I've gone through the motions Griff of down. roles, but the reality Griffin is... Has, Griffin has been humbled at this very moment. <laughs> it doesn't take long, Arimathea. Everybody is led out by these guards that have come in, sensing a clear attack. One of your last looks, Brock, because you're down on the ground and it's easy to roll your head around right now, so you don't have to make a perception roll. You realize that as soon as this started, while these guards have been coming in from the side, other guards have moved quickly in front of the Emperor, creating a line, a wall, as if who knows what the heck's about to happen. Perfect military precision. You've seen columns move like this before. These individuals are trained, high guard, and not once did their weapons come out. In each case, their hands were on them, other than where the ones that were carrying glaives and whatnot. Obviously, those weapons are out. But the sheath swords were never drawn here. Um, you catch all this, the military precision, as you guys are dragged back. Well, Sadly, Brock is being dragged blaze only because of Russ's character verdict hanging onto his ankle and whatnot. Um, but it was clear as more guards came in that Anna and the others are all being hauled out. Um, you guys get about, I don't know, again, you, you know, 300 feet long, as I said, probably about 100 feet away before they slow long enough other guards coming in to physically break Russ's grip from Indiana. But at this point, Indiana is being taken out as well because they don't know what the heck's happening um you're led from this room go ahead blaze at any point in time was i able to get a visual of the emperor i will give you a chance it's a really high <laughs> dc but we're going to say that you made a chance to take a look okay what am i rolling perception it's sorry straight perception to see something like that I'm going to add 10 to that. To make it a dirty 21? Yeah. Okay. Dirty 21 it is. Uh, let me just adjust that so I do not forget. Nobody else is adjusting it, right? Let me, I'll, I'll add maybe like three. Making it a dirty it's 24? Be, yeah, let's make it a dirty 24. Okay. My gosh, you just put 13 points at it. For seven more, you could just make it a dirty 20 if you wanted. Of course, checks don't make, make a difference. It's not combat, so the, the DC is the DC. Um, I say that for our viewers who might be thinking, why aren't they just making it an instant golden crit? 
because a golden crit only makes a nat 20, and nat 20s are only active in combat. Um, uh, hey, Sean, I, I don't know if you saw this on the chat, but uh, somebody redeemed create a minor NPC and redeemed DM disadvantage next roll. All right, let me put those on there. Uh, DM disadvantage for the next roll. And again, the only time I will um, not do it on the next roll is if the players all ask it not to happen to an NPC. Um, right. So Freya, thank you for that, uh, for being on the sides of the players. And we have, uh, who gave the minor NPC shade? Of that course. was me. Oh, wait, no, it was very <laughs> Human yeah, cleric, was assist I'm cashing my own chips in. <laughs> human heal. Spicing it up. You guys are taken away. Um, Brock, I will give you the solution to that here in a minute. Um, you think you have seen something. But rather than announce what it is, I don't think it would affect what you're doing right now. Um, it, you, you definitely saw, caught a glimpse of something, you know, human back there and whatnot shape. The skin did not look right of the human that you saw. And I will give you more on that here in a moment. Um, you guys are taken away, but you are not led back out to the entrance and kicked out to the circus. You are actually led to a downwards and under, down many steps, escorted by guards and whatnot, where you are eventually placed into individual cells, all right next to one another. Oh, no. Um, God. They don't know what happened or why, but it's better safe than sorry in a situation like this, and you are locked up. Um, you are, before being locked up, search so if you have something hidden it will be removed from you now just in case you're trying to bring in something magical against the emperor um you can basically remove that and following that a human shows up because i'm gonna guess that verick verdict is still writhing on the ground are you keeping up the performance or i am keeping up the performance also question does that mean they went into my pants and took my quill out the quill wasn't considered dangerous. They don't. No. no. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I'm still. Anything that down looked there going, like an overt uh, weapon or possibly a magic item, but that's just a quill. I mean, who cares if you have a quill? Excellent. At least not these guys. They didn't, they didn't consider it a weapon with a silver cap on it. I mean, what's, what the heck's the point? I mean, they even uncapped it and recapped it, you know, because you got to say the word as well. So it's like, it's just a quill. I mean, they could have crumpled it up and broke it, but. Um. Eric, I don't know if you had anything that you wanted to ask about or whatnot. Uh, Brock, you already gave up your daggers. I'm assuming there was nothing else that you were carrying that like looked like it would be like standing out as a magic item or a wand or anything like that. Um, like if you were a wizard, obviously your supplies would be gone. Um, interestingly enough, like um, anything that they, well, they didn't have to take anything from you. Interestingly, you did notice that Arimathea had a few things taken off of her small knives and whatnot that were in her boots mm -mm. and whatnot. Those really tall boots that she wears. The boots oh. were also removed and put on the side, which is where they found the things. Um, so you guys might be a little surprised that, yeah, you know, um, those boots are laid out over on the side, including the fact that when they were going over the boots after finding some daggers on her and whatnot, one of those long heels came off and something seemed to spill out <laughs> from the inside. So Arimathea had a little more going on than what she was proposed or seen. And another well, interesting fact is that the person who led you in is also now locked up a few cells down from you. One of their own. Um, a human does come to look at you and speaks in again this high common as they say to Verdict, may I come in please and attend to you? Which seems rather odd to ask permission to enter a cell. So Verdict's going to put one hand down by his pocket where the quill is. Mm -hmm. And he's going to, inside the pocket, his fingers are going to kind of go near the cap. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just in case I have to pop it off, I'm just going to have my finger like this, but I'm going to keep my eyes shut and I'm going to go, please. The person is just coming in, and I would like you to make a constitution save for me, please. Oh, boy. Come on. There we go. Constitution it is. 12. And that's your final roll? 
or final uh round? we'll burn the last four we'll last, the last, last four. four plot points trying to trying to keep up well it worked because you passed your 15 again so <laughs> Uh, tell you, he's like, he's like, I am not suffering the effects of whatever's going on, but your <laughs> stomach is growling. You're able to pinch your butt close. That gas is building up in your stomach even more. Um, and you know, at some point you're going to let this out and oh, it, real soon. <laughs> yeah. It has to come out. Um, I hope you have a change of drawers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, big time. <laughs> oh my. At least God. they weren't fancy. <laughs> The individual at least you didn't let like go in front of the emperor. Looking at you, and as he's checking you out, asking you questions about the pain, da da da, asks you what you've eaten recently and whatnot. What did you eat off that tray? Uh, there were some crackers and some cheese on there and a slice of bread. He, he goes, One should definitely eat more slowly and whatnot. Um, he goes, Usually I recommend rice to still his stomach, and as he's pressing on your stomach, you have disadvantage on a constitution check because he's literally pushing in on your intestines now. While he was asking before that occurs, could I make a mess and roll to see if maybe I had any inkling of whether or not the food is the problem? You could just assume that. You don't need to make a roll. Well, I'm going to be saying, I think it was poisoned and then I'm just going to uh, and then I'm going to do the roll. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, if you're all high enough twice, I mean, you'll be good. Yeah, I don't think we're going to make it this time. I think we're at the end of our rope here. I don't know. I've seen Brock do some amazing rolls. <laughs> That's true. A 15 and a 13. Wow. And Oh, yeah, I think it's just a 13. I didn't know I rolled twice. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's disadvantage. Oh, no, wait. Well, one was for the, the added plot points, right? That right. was the one. And so 15. roll again because you have disadvantage. So you got a 15 right. and... Oh, man. <laughs> And on that one, oh, no. <laughs> and with that, you all hear this oh, trumpeting man. explosion as flatulence and all that comes with it when it's a wet flatulence explodes <laughs> out of this man's rear end and doesn't seem to stop. It goes <laughs> and it goes and he starts filling his pants and it goes and it goes a little longer, <laughs> and it goes, and oh my god, and the smell that starts coming out. I need everybody to make a constitution save for me, please. As this <laughs> cloud of gas starts coming out of his butt. Oh my god. I see a four. They put me in the cell at the end of the hallway. <laughs> I just want to say Griff is actually cackling right now in his cell. The <laughs> the explosion comes out of his butt and whatnot and <laughs> literally can be seen. His pants are filled, but this yellowish cloud starts issuing out from the cell and blaze. You immediately start choking on it. Griffin, you start gagging, but you're just far enough across the way that you're like, oh, you know, you're able to use your wings and move it away a little bit. Your constitution save was just higher enough. Blaze, you immediately start gagging and choking. You're taking damage. Verdict, you don't need to roll. You're fine. Blaze, you take D6 damage. So that will be two points of damage this round. And you made your save this round, Griffin, as you don't take any damage trying to keep this smell away. But the cloud is in the air. As a poisonous glass cloud has been released. And I just want to thank Darren for uh, uh, re releasing a magic item with a potion of poison gas cloud into the game that you ate in your food. Oh, no. <laughs> That's you great. You found this entire thing and it's been working against your Thanks, whole system son. just waiting to come out. <laughs> and you have now created a poison glass cloud in a closed space with all the players that you will be dealing with here. Now, um, the individual I have to make his saving throw that was working on you and he absolutely fails, starts choking and yells out, Trap! loudly oh, before no. he goes down succumbing to this poison cloud. Arimathea 
on the other hand, she fails as well and is choking on this as well. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, she took max damage, which we have exploding dice. And max... I think you might have killed her. Oh, oh my Three God. in a row. I've just rolled three sixes in a row. And finally broke the sixth street. Arimathea goes down choking and lies still on the ground. What would you like to do this round? I'm not, I don't need to roll initiative because you're not in combat yet, but it is, we are a by the round as a stinking gas cloud is around you all. Is there, is the gate open to my cell? You want to get up and check? Poopy pants. <laughs> as I mean, get, as you get up to I'm check, it's stripping to, down right? your pants. Oh, I don't God. Care. Doesn't matter. The cell door is just a jar. He did not close it the whole way. You saw I'm him. I'm going to open the cell. You step over him. He's still coughing and he tries to grab your leg and whatnot. It'll be a grapple check, but he has disadvantage. It's disadvantage because his hand's just going to roll, slide off. Oh, he got a one anyway, so pretty much Yikes. you're good at the five. You know, his hand slides off your leg covered in fecal material retching as he does so adding puke to this um you're able to get to the door and what are your intents upon getting to the door before we cut over to griffin and blaze did i hear arimathea hit the floor you can if you would like yeah she was yeah, coughing I'm, and choking and went down. i'm gonna open the door and i'm gonna attempt to go to arimathea's cell easy enough you know where, where she's at um, you go dripping along the floor till you get over there, leaving a nice track for anybody to follow. Just had to, just had to throw that in, huh? <laughs> Absolutely, buddy. I just want to make sure that he God. gets his full value. He bought the magic <laughs> item. It was in the game. And I was going to be like, hey, look. And then you were just like, I'm eating this. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> oh, God. <clears throat> wow. It's bad cheese. Don't eat all the cheese. It's further than bad. That is just horrid. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, quick question, Sean. Yes. Inside Griff's cell, is he able to spread his wings completely? I would not say, think so. These aren't that big. They're built for one person. So I'm picturing more like when you played... um. Uh, Oh, gosh, I can't even remember the name of the game now. But, yeah, they're probably about four or five feet wide, just big enough for you to sit in. Little tiny Yikes. bench. And lengthwise, how about that? Maybe about eight feet deep. So closer. You know, if you bent closer. your feathers over, yeah, I think you could do it if you bent your feathers over. Is there a window? No. Is, yeah. No, these are just cells it's down. Cells. Am I, am I, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you actually, I just realized you just killed one of the other things that I was going to have you guys notice down here because of that. <laughs> Verdict. Damn. There was a small uh, thing associated with this place that I was going to give you, but I can't give it to you now. No. It all smells like <laughs> it's, poop. It's, it's overshadowed right now. <laughs> uh, is, is Griffin capable of, like, really, like, flap his wings a little bit to get a nice, like, gust of flow wind? of. Yeah, something. You can to, try like, with get one wing, man, and just be, like, batting that away as much as possible. Yeah, I'd love to, please. I'll give you advantage <laughs> for trying that on any further saves. Um, okay. So that'll give you advantage on this round saves, and I'll okay. go ahead and let you make. Um, on the positive side, Russ, your character is immune to this. Um, this gas cloud, gaseous cloud. Um, you are not Eric, so would you please have Griffin make a con save on this turn? Sure. And then with advantage. Blaze, I'll have you make your action, and then you'll tell. I'll have you make your save at the end of your turn. Nice. Uh, well, do I have to roll for advantage if I got a crit? <laughs> no, no, you really don't. <laughs> cool, cool. There yeah. you go. Yeah, you already Ooh. hit your max on that, so boom. You are um, coughing. You do not take damage again this turn as you manage to keep some of this yellow, stinking cloud away from you. You can smell it. It's nasty, but... What's especially weird about it is the way this cloud literally seems to be almost alive trying to fill the space. Hmm. Blaze. Uh, 
Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I just want to add one quick thing for role play, but believe it or not, Griff is still actually cackling at this. Uh, <laughs> he's not fully aware that this might be actually dangerous, but he's he's just loving the situation right now. Blaze, up to you, sir. What are you trying? The the front of this is this like a wooden door. Is this uh it bars? What? I pictured it more of a cell doors, but I like the idea of the wood with the metal. So yeah, let's go with that. We're wood frame with some metal in between. A wood frame with some metal in between. So gaps for a yeah. small creature. Okay, I'm I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to transform into a rat and and get out and into the hallway. Nice. You transform into a rat, scurry up this door easy enough. You fit through the bars and whatnot. And as you do, you hear meow, and a thud on the door behind you. You scurry back up, look through the bars, and you see Rifle inside the room where you just were. And it seems that Rifle was trying to chase the rat out the door. Rifle is quickly trying to climb to the bars and, like, is pawing at you, seeing a rat. What do you want to do? Let Rifle extract I'm, I'm you? trying to get out into the hallway and away from this gas. Okay. Um, staying close to the ground, you're under the gas. You look up. You notice that the gas seems to be moving towards you, and even Rifle is affected by it and falls back from the door by this gas. The cat coughing and whatnot from taking damage from this gas as well. You, on the other hand, stay low. I'm going to give you this round. No problem. No no need to roll. I guess I should make... I'll just make the roll easier. Go ahead with advantage and make your con save. I'll just lower the DC. That way our viewers are honored. You don't even got to roll again, dude. You already made it. <laughs> You're good. So, top of the round. Um, you are at her door, Varric. The coughing from the medical doctor has stopped. So is she in the back of the cell? They're not really that big of a cell, so. Can I reach her? It's a wood door with metal bars. So you got to climb up the door. The wood, the metal openings are near the top. So you could not. Who opened the door for the medic to come in? Well, with a visual, would I be able to like put my arm in to get like to touch her? She's laying on the ground and the door is more the opening is near the top. So no, you cannot reach through to get to her. You'll have to open the door. And they're locked. You see no lock. Uh, so while I'm trying to figure this out, I'm going to attempt to open the door. And while I do that, I say the food I ate had to have been poisoned. I also sensed a nasty fiendish creature down here somewhere beneath the emperor. I don't know what it is, but it's dangerous. And I'm trying to concentrate on getting that door open. You concentrate with one hand and the door opens. You put another hand on it and it continues to open easily. All right. Can I touch her and cast spell? I'd like to use spare the dying. You can. Cast your spare the dying. I should do that. Yes. And then if you would roll 15,000 for me, please. 15,000? Yep. Slash R for roll, space D, 15,000 with three zeros. 15 with three zeros. 12378. And I will let you role play what's happening in a moment. I have to open up my little folder here and honor that wild magic surge that is about to happen. Oh, no. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) There we go. Could be good. Could be bad. We're about to find out as this wild magic surge takes effect and the DM goes over to boom. One moment here. Oh, audience, do, does thou anyone have a way to make this end well? I know. Like, <laughs> well, they could, oh, they could have been buying you different things and whatnot for dice, but I like this wild. Yeah, this, here. this wild magic stuff sucks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Trust me, it get it can get real bad. You know the, fu- yes, the funny thing is, is that like all the other streams where they allow players to be part of it, which is one of the things that Plot Points does, will allow player or viewers to work against the players. And I'm like, nope, I won't have it in my game. But Wild Magic's kind of like that roll of the dice. It's like yep. 
I don't know if it's going to be helpful, Saki. I mean, you know, I'm glad we tempered it down. <laughs> oh, I did promise that I would always give that too. Please roll a D6 for me because there is an opportunity that Wild Magic on its own can be still big and gnarly without doing the kerfuffle one. Oh, look at that. Six. It's a six. Wow. <laughs> and guess what? That's a step up. Okay. Um. So it's not just going to be a little thing. Let's get over here. Oh, no. I'm going to roast this poor thing to death. I have Gosh. no idea till I look at what it is. Oh. Party, wild magic. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Go to my table for 15,000. You're at 12,378. All I wanted was for Blaze not to be joined with Cthulhu. That's all I was trying to do. <laughs> a, a valiant effort indeed. But how it escalated so quickly is just beyond me. <laughs> I I don't know. And also those strength rolls, I mark it now because you'll never see strength rolls like that ever again. For and me. This was a laying of hands for Spare the Dying. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a cantrip. So it's a cantrip called Spare the Dying. Uh, yep, touch a living you, creature that has zero points. Yeah. Yep. You she should be stable. Lay your hand on her and whatnot, and as you do, radiant light shines out from you through the body and whatnot, blasting you backwards out the door that you just came through. Actually, Ouch. since you're leaning over her, you get blasted up into the ceiling. You hit the ceiling and then fall back down. Luckily, it's not falling damage of eight feet, but you do take damage from the initial hit on the ceiling. This light that radiates out from you passes through the bars next to you into each other cell, striking Blaze and Griffin as well. Um, Blaze is in the hallway. Oh, Blaze, you're a little rat. Oh, you're going to get thrown. Wow. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> um. So do me a favor and roll a D20, and let's see how many feet you go flying as a little rat. Oh my god, he's gonna get launched. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, I, I gave him a chance to one. Maybe it passes mostly over his head. Uh, maybe. And then the Griffin, music plays you the have background. disadvantage because you have your wing out to uh, bat things away, so you're catching the blunt. You have disadvantage on a dexterity check. It's a dexterity, dexterity save, actually. It's not a check. So you get thrown okay. 18 feet, Blaze, and where you strike into stairs that were leading down here. Woo, you did very good on your save. Um, You get pushed back. Oh, disadvantage, right. Thank you. Yeah, um, so there's that 13. <laughs> so you get pushed into the wall. Um, Let's see. I hate using the word um, but it is what it is. You took four damage verdict for being blasted into the ceiling and falling. You took one point of damage uh, for flying back into the bars, Eric. Okay. Brock, as the little rat, you went flying down the hallway into the stairs and you are stunned this turn but you do not lose shape you lose your um you have disadvantage on your con save for this turn against the poisonous gas cloud but the poisonous glass cloud has not gone that far yet so you are good you automatically pass because it hasn't gotten there yet gas cloud continues to expand this turn you are not knocked unconscious, um, but everybody was blown off their feet. You had just stabilized her when this force wave that knocks anything and everybody back pushes her against the wall. She has disadvantage on her save. That would have been a good roll. And that a decent roll too. So she is still okay. She is um, unconscious, but alive. And you can see her breathing deeply. She will have to make her con save on this roll as well. We'll start top of the round with this next session when we come back. you fighting the, your own poisonous gas cloud thanks to viewer participation who chose to bring in a magic item to the game, which was quickly eaten slash quaffed by the individual who had a chance to pick up this magic item, um, which was kind of cool all in its own right. And you will be fighting your own selves, which is always kind of the best possible because you have brought a some form of sentient poison gas cloud into this game wow and that's a wow. session so we actually did get a chance to get before the emperor before our own actions chose to get us tossed out from the emperor not all everybody 
we did make contact with Anna this session, which was kind of cool, and found out that Anna's living it kind of comfortably in the middle with her own sense of gravity, so we don't have to worry about shaking her to death inside. That's kind of cool in and of itself. But we still don't know what happened to Slappy, nor do we actually know what the heck is going on as far as the Emperor, the thing. Oh, by the way, Brock, I did promise to let you know, the Emperor's skin is an off color for these other individuals. You're used to this olive colored human and whatnot, but this vibrant, almost green, if you will, a uh, shade of green to yellow seemed particularly odd, as did the fang that you saw sticking out, but you did not catch the facial shape to know whether this is dragonborn or something else. But seeing one long fang definitely seemed odd. And the person seemed smaller. It might be a child emperor back there in the shadows because where you saw the fang was not high enough to be a full adult like these other humans that you've seen. So you have a few tips. Um, I do have a question. Yeah. Um, with everything going on down there, the poison cloud, the whatever's flying out and around there, uh, rifle was down on the floor. Yep. Uh, did he receive any of this healing? Did he take any damage? The healing wave was turned into a blast effect, knocking everything within 50 feet off its feet, which is what happened. So he will get a um, go ahead and make a save for him. Dexterity, the same as what Griffin had to make. And he gets no bonus stats, so it's a straight just D20. 15, good enough. It's good enough that he gets pushed back against the wall when this effect comes. Um, but he was not unconscious yet. He had not failed his save against the poisonous gas, which is apparently killing individuals left and right. I mean, because Arimathea went down, but luckily she had a healer to come to her and has already knocked out the healer that did come down to help out. Um, however, it appears that one of our individuals, Blaze, transformed and is already out of his cell verdict got out of his cell and has quickly entered another cell and griffin is just batting away at this cloudy gas as we leave off this evening wow what are your final <laughs> thoughts while i find what stream i want to take us to <laughs> thoughts for the crowd thoughts for the audience you want to thank them at least for taking the time to bless you with magic items <laughs> that you quickly used as well as I don't even know as well as what I'm like, you know, hey, look, you guys, <laughs> you guys use your own skill to get out. I mean, Brock did some amazing yeah. role playing. I mean, in there, you guys were like passive. You were making it happen with the emperor. You found out he has a special fetish for Blaze for some reason. Strange. Oh, um, I don't know. I'm starting to uh, align with Griff here on verdict has been nothing but trouble since he stepped in. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Maybe, all right. Maybe, For maybe, all of my maybe. pains, this is what I'm getting. <laughs> Expect a slow relationship build, just as a very slow one, because the trust is like not there right now. <laughs> you might want to make away. yourself fierce, <laughs> or at least find a shower. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm stealing Big a guard's time. pants. There's no doubt about it. This is going to get more awkward before it gets better. So <laughs> I think our, our plotter's takeaway from all this is whatever table you're at, man, you know, make your friends early because if you shit your pants later on, they might not be your friends anymore and whatnot. Hey, so from all of us at Plot Points, I want to thank you for watching us tonight. Thank you for being part of our table. You know, it doesn't matter if you're at a virtual table or a tabletop in your house. Whatever table you're at, make it the best game possible. Make some absolutely amazing memories that you can take with you and laugh about, whether it's shit in your pants, whether it's turning into a, you know, a, a rat and being chased by your own cat, whatever it is, make amazing memories and make really lasting friendships wherever you're at. Oh, man. How about that sentient fart cloud? That was... I love that. I just love that whole entire situation. How about those pants full of shit? Yes! <laughs> I mean, I could dwell on it, but it's not not really going to make a difference right now. So Dwell on it? Wow. Or dwell yeah, I could dwell on it. I could be very upset about it, but there's not, 
Verdict's just focused on getting out right now, and uh, that that other dude's pants are about to get stolen. <laughs>